Necromancer is one of the more complex classes in Diablo in my eyes, and if you don't get your build right early on, leveling can become a slow, arduous process. So today I wanted to bring you my Bone Spear Necromancer build that does some absurd damage to both single target enemies and groups of enemies from very early on. We managed to stack so much critical strike chance and damage through the build itself that you'll hit some pretty crazy numbers for your level. The build has excellent essence generation, a panic button for when you're about to die, and tons of corpse explosions so it truly does cover every base. This is one of the few leveling builds that can be taken to all the way to level 100, world tier 4, that's how strong it is. The first ability you want to unlock is bone splinters which fires 3 splinters towards an enemy and generates essence. Enhanced bone splinters gives it a 25% chance to fire 2 additional projectiles if cast above 50 essence, and then acolytes bone splinters gives you a 8% additional critical strike chance for 4 seconds when you hit the same enemy with all 3 bone splinters. Your core ability which you want to unlock as soon as it's available is bone spear which fires a bone spear which can pierce through enemies. Enhanced bone spear is going to make the bone spear break into 3 shards which ricochet back after it hits a solid object to apply even more damage. And then you want to first start off with supernatural bone spear which makes enemies vulnerable so you deal more damage to them. The only the offensive aspect I'm really going to push in this build you can get from a dungeon fairly early on after you do a little bit of the campaign is the splintering aspect. It's obtained from the Gulron slums in the dry steps. What this does is it makes your bone spear apply vulnerable and it makes the shards that ricochet back deal 50% more damage to vulnerable enemies. I would highly recommend putting this aspect on an amulet or a two handed scythe so you get a 50 to 100% bonus to the power of the aspect. Once you do get this aspect you can change supernatural bone spear to paranormal bone spear as the aspect is going to apply vulnerable so paranormal bone spear will increase critical strike chance and it will sometimes spawn 5 shards on the ricochet back instead of the usual 3 when bone spears initial hit is a critical one. And trust me with this build your bone spears initial hit will be a critical one most of the time. In terms of how you use bone spear it becomes exponentially more powerful if you can pin an enemy or boss next to a wall so that all the ricochets hit the target as they come back so always try and keep that in mind. You want to get this core ability to 5 out of 5 as soon as possible to maximize Bone Spear's damage. I see a lot of players making this mistake early on and that's unlocking tons of offensive abilities of which you won't be able to use them all on the battlefield because you have limited essence resource. Instead you want some abilities which are cooldown based instead rather than using up essence. Blood Mist is one such ability you want to put one point into and it essentially acts as a panic button which makes makes you immune to damage for 3 seconds and it breaks any crowd control or stuns you may have on you. So it can really help you reposition and survive when you're in a bad spot. Next you want to put one point into corpse explosion which as the name suggests causes a corpse to explode dealing damage to surrounding enemies. Enhanced corpse explosion increases the radius of the explosion by 15% and plagued corpse explosion deals increased damage to crowd controlled enemies. Remember bone spear is going to apply vulnerable. You want to then put 3 points into grim harvest which is going to generate 6 essence for every corpse you explode. You can do this in between fights now to not only deal damage but also generate essence. One defensive aspect you definitely want to keep a lookout for is aspect of the embalmer which when you use corpse explosion will make it have up to a 30% chance of spawning a blood orb which can heal you. So now corpse explosion not only generates essence but it can also be used as a healing tool. Unfortunately this doesn't come from a dungeon but only as a drop so keep a lookout for it on legendaries that drop while you're leveling. You can pair this with another aspect to take this build to stratospheric levels. Aspect of the explosive mist whereby your blood mist can trigger corpse explosions makes it so that blood mist now not only acts as a panic button making you immune but it causes corpse explosions which can trigger blood orbs through aspect of the embalmer meaning you can get some ridiculous healing on top. Again this is going to be an aspect that drops rather than is obtainable from a dungeon so keep a lookout. these two aspects combined can really change the build completely. Moving on you next want to unlock corpse tendrils which uses a corpse to hoover in enemies into one location and stun them for 3 seconds. It doesn't use the corpse so you can explode it later on. 
Enhanced Corpse Tendrils adds a slow effect prior to pulling enemies in, and Plagued Corpse Tendrils makes enemies affected by the skill vulnerable. So now you can group up enemies with Corpse Tendrils and use one Bone Spear to clear them out. That honestly forms the crux of the rotation for the build. A bonus aspect to look out for is going to be Aspect of the Grasping Veins, which gives you up to a 20% increased critical strike chance for 6 seconds after you use Corpse Tendrils and up to a 60% bonus to critical strike damage on top. You can get this one from the Corrupted Grotto Dungeon a little bit later on in the game or keep an eye out on Legendary Drops. Remember if you put it on an amulet then you'll get a 50% increased bonus to the critical strike chance and damage it provides which I did pretty early on myself. At level 15 you unlock the Necromancer specific questline and you'll want to do this pretty early on so you can unlock the Golem. This build does not rely on summoning any minions so we sacrifice them all to gain massive passive bonuses that makes the build even more crazy. We sacrifice our Skirmisher Skeletal Warriors to gain 5% more critical strike chance, we sacrifice our Cold Skeletal Mages to get 15% increased damage to vulnerable enemies, and then we sacrifice our Iron Golems to get 30% more critical strike damage. You can see that we're really stacking those critical strike chance damage bonuses, so our Bone Spear will hit some ridiculous numbers. Next, we're going to unlock our Bone Skill passive abilities. You want 3 points in Serration to get even more critical strike chance, 3 points in Compound Fracture to get a bonus to damage when you do critical strike enemies, and 3 points in Avulsion to deal 18% extra critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. You're now going to be able to unlock your ultimate ability Bone Storm, which deals massive damage to surrounding enemies as the bones swirl around you for 10 seconds. Prime Bone Storm gives you 15% damage reduction on top, and then Supreme Bone Storm gives you 20% more critical strike chance on top when Bone Storm is active. So in any moment where you're getting overwhelmed with tons of enemies, use Corpse Tendrils to gather them all up, pop your Bone Storm and then unleash a few Bone Spears and they will literally all be massive critical hits that clear out everything because of all the bonuses we're stacking. Our key passive you want to unlock as soon as it's available is Ossified Essence which further enhances our bone skills giving them even more damage based on how much essence we have when we use them. Next, put one point into standalone so you can unlock Memento Mori and put three points into this so your passive bonuses you're getting from sacrificing your minions become 60% stronger. Yep, that means we now get 8% increased critical strike chance and 48% increased critical strike damage. You'll have a couple of points left over so put these into the passive Hued Flesh which is found earlier on in the skill tree next to Bone Spear which helps you generate corpses from just damage which can be helpful in boss fights with low number of adds. With your final few points depending on how much renown you have put one point into unliving energy so you can unlock imperfectly balanced so your core skills do more damage but cost more essence. The reason why I recommend getting this last is because by the time you're level 50 you'll hopefully have better items, better essence generation so you won't be limited by that as much. So you can really go all in on damage at that point. So there you have it, my Bone Spear Necromancer build that stacks so many critical strike chance and damage bonuses, you can one-shot elites like no other class. If you enjoyed what I talked about today, remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Diablo builds as we get deeper into the game. I'm Mr. Onnit and that's it for today. Peace out, guys.